Good morning. My name is Sang Yeon Cho. I am from New Mexico State University. And um, <clears throat> here's uh, the co-author of this presentation. Today I'm going to present experimental the first experimental detection of uh, malaria parasites using a uh, plasmonic nanostructure. So this work was done, uh, was, uh, was supported by the Bill Gates Foundation. So here's the background information about uh, plasmonic immunosensing. In our structure, uh, in our approach is to use uh, plasm uh, this metal nanostructure to detect the presence of a uh, target parasite. In this case, mal malaria pathogens. So this, uh, this nanostructure that is fabricated on metal film can, uh, is used to, uh, to excite surface plasma wave. And this surface plasma wave is highly sensitive to any changes or any index perturbations on the metal surface. So in order to use this sensor, this nanostructure as a plasmatic sensor, we mobilize surface uh, uh, with, uh, we mobilize at target antibodies, antibodies that can identify malaria pathogens onto the, sen uh, onto the sensor surface. And we monitor the, the optical either reflection spectrum or transmission spectrum of these surface plasma waves. And as schemat schematically shown here, with and without um, antibody antigen interaction on the uh, sensor surface, we can expect a uh, spectral shift. Here's some background information about how to excite the surface plasma wave. In order, to, in order to launch surface plasma wave, we need to provide additional momentum to the incident wave. In this vector diagram, this Ka represent the wave vector of our incident wave. And in order to launch surface plasma wave, that has propagation, wave, uh, propagation constant of beta SPP we use periodicity of this nanostructure, providing this additional grating vector to the instant wave to excite surface plasma wave. So for sensor design, we solve this dispersion relation of the surface plasma wave in a metal thin uh, metal film. By numerically solving this dispersion relation, we can obtain the value of beta SPP. Again, beta SPP is the wave vector of my surface plasma wave. Once we obtain beta SPP, we can use this phase matching condition to soar to obtain the value of my period, this capital lambda. And once we excite this surface plasma wave, we can expect highly enhanced optical transmission through this nanostructure, namely extraordinary optical transmission. But from this phase matching condition, only information that we can extract, is, or we can obtain, is the, uh, um, is the resonant wavelengths. However, in order to have some information about the spectral response, we need to, we need to perform electromagnetic simulation. So for this simulation, we use finite, commercial finite element method solver, Kamsol Multiphysics, to calculate the overall spectral response. As you can see from this graph, from this uh, simulation result, we can, exp we can see this resonant peak, a resonant peak of EOT, extraordinary optical transmission. And we investigate this uh, spectral response at a different uh, spectral response of this nano array, uh, this nanostructure at a different excitation condition by changing the instant uh, by changing the instant angle. So as we increase the instant angle of my excitation wave, we can expect we observe this redshift from this EOT spectrum. Now, after we characterize after we calculate the spectral response of this nano, nano, periodic nanostructure, 
We fabricate this structure using a focused ion beam system and measure the transmission spectrum. This blue graph represents the measured tr transmission spectrum. And as you can see, there is a pretty strong resonant peak due to EOT at around 720 nanometer. We compare this result with our simulation result and shows those two results shows pretty good uh, agreement. Now, before using this plasmatic nanostructure for biosensing, we first characterize, we first calibrate the refractive index sensitivity of this nanostructure using, um, by applying uh, the five different glucose solutions at different concentration to this nanosensor. We prepare these five different concentrations of glucose solution in the eye water and introduce them onto our, uh, onto our uh, nanosensor. And using a well-known equation, we, we, we estimate the index perturbation from this uh, different concentration, then introduce them and measure the transmission spectrum. These are the measured transmission spectrum, spectra, spectral response uh, to different glucose uh, solution. And between each measurement, we completely rinse the surface of our sensor with the eye water, showing pretty uh, 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 nice uh, restoration of the initial uh, spectrum. And the measured refractive index sensitivity of this particular sensor was 378 nanometer per RIU, refractive index unit. Now, after we calibrate the refractive index sensitivity of our sensor, as so a next step, we immobilize malaria antibodies to our sensor. This schematic diagram shows the steps, the, those immobilization steps. The first step is to modify the gold surface with DSP. After we modify the gold surface with DSP, we apply protein A. After applying protein A, we later we immobilize target antibodies on protein A. So then, as you can see from this schematic diagram, this, anti this, uh, this active bonding sites are well aligned. Here's the schematic diagram of our experimental characterization setup. As you can see, we use a QTH quartz tungsten halogen lamp as our optical source. And using this quartz halogen lamp and beam splitter and microscope objective, we were able to focus the beam right onto our sensor. And then we introduce blood samples into our chamber through this uh, uh, macroscopic tube, uh, macro scale uh, tubing. When we introduce blood sample, we first lyse those blood sample, uh, red blood cells with the eye water. And using this CCD-based uh, uh, CCD spectrometer, we were able to measure the transmission spectrum. And the overall process was monitored by a camera. Here's the measured, uh, measured result. The graph on the left shows measured transmission spectrum, spectral response. So first, we measured transmission spectrum just with the eye water. Then we immobilize antibodies using the same uh, surface chemistry, applying, same surface ke uh, uh, applying that surface chemistry to our nanosensor and measured spectral response again. As you can see, there is significant redshift of the entire spectrum from, uh, from the reference point. And then we introduce malaria-infected uh, uh, blood samples onto our sensor and monitored up to about 100 minutes. And these two graphs shows the initial and final spectral response. There is not much drift. And then we complete, uh, thoroughly rinse the surface with the eye water, again, and measure the spectral response. So the actual response 
from the antibody antigen interaction is the difference between this this uh, green and 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 red curve uh, and 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 this uh, purple curve. The measured spectral response was about 1.5 nanometer redshift. And then we also monitor the transmitted intensity changes at the fixed wavelengths. In this case, we choose a wavelength around 710, which is the left-hand side of the EOT peak. And we monitor this, we plot intensity changes at each steps. So this is, for example, in this case, this represents antibody mobilization step. So we measured uh, the transmitted power right after an antibody mobilization steps. And then this is the uh, measured response with infected whole blood. And then this is the measured response after final rinse with the eye water. So the actual response be, uh, uh, from, the, from the antibody antigen interaction is, 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 is the difference between these two. However, there is a possibility that, that some non-specific binding can contribute to, to, this, to this difference. So we, in order to, 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 to measure the actual contribution from antibody antigen interaction, we performed a controlled experiment. So first, we test our sensor with infected, malaria-infected blood, chicken blood, and applying them to our sensor and measure the spectral response. So this, this, uh, 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 this black, uh, graph in black represent the measured transmission spectrum spectral response with just the eye water. Then this graph in red represent the measured spectral response after the antibody immobilization. Then these two graphs, graphs in uh, 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 green and, and, and blue represent response from non-infected and infected, infected, chicken blood, uh, infected blood. So you can see that there is noticeable shift. And we observe about 6% reduction in transmitted power caused by antibody antigen binding, and about 2.5% reduction due to the non-specific non binding. So here's the summary. We demonstrate nanohole-based biosensor for malaria pathogen detection. The measured refractive sensitivity was about 378 nanometer per RIU. And we experimentally demonstrate selective detection of malaria parasite. And this work was funded by Bill Gates Foundation. And the sensor fabrication was performed at uh, the Sandia National Lab. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>